Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the MJ sector. So the bulls got a bit more follow through and this is what we are looking for as far as seeing daily higher lows established. Some names are breaking the tops of their bounces. Other names are looking back to their tops of their bounces. So the good thing about doing YouTube videos every day is that we have it set in stone to go back and look at. And I highly suggest people go back and look at the Monday video and what we pointed out as little shifts that we were noticing that led to bullish entries on Monday. And it's also beneficial to me because if, you know, if I were superficially to answer, why did I make bullish entries Monday? My answer would be gut feeling or just intuition, which comes from experience. But by doing these videos, that's not a good enough answer. And I have to give actual reasons. So that requires me to actually look more in depth, be a little bit more thorough. And essentially what it boils down to is the bulls are not necessarily showing up but what has stood out to us is a lack of bear action where this daily bounce was a perfect setup for bears to take back over again. And this shows bear exhaustion. We started the pullback, the daily lower highs were set. And rather than dropping right back down towards our support, the bears got no little follow through. And now the bulls are continuing their bounce. So again, we are still looking for weekly lower highs to be set. Absolutely. Anything on CGC under 28.89 is a lower high, we can go pretty much 30% before we get to that resistance level. So that's not even in the picture. A weekly lower high will result from this bounce unless there's some kind of major news catalyst. And right now, we're just watching the hourly uptrend. So the hourly time frame, anything above 2072 is an hourly high or low. The last two mornings have been very similar in the sense that the bulls failed to break the high of the previous day in the first 30 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes of trading, and they, held their support, there was no profit take, or there was no bulls bailing and bears pushing the price down significantly. And then late in the morning, we end up moving to break those resistances. So we'll see if the bulls can pull that off again tomorrow with an hourly high or low, try to see a bull break over 2190, 22, and 2232 are the next resistance levels that the CGC bulls are looking at. And again, no notable bull volume, nothing really strong here. It just looks like bears running out of their momentum. Looks like all the bear volume was used up here. And after that, no bears left to make their entries on that daily lower high. ACB. So on the verge of stopping out with my entry on Monday, the stop was 351 and I always give wiggle room. So did not stop out by a penny on ACB and still holding this position, but the bulls must break 391 to change the daily trend. If we cannot break 391, it is a big failure for the bulls. It is still absolutely one of the weaker, larger Canadian MJ names. And in hindsight, I do like the fact that I took two positions to diversify a bit, but it would have gone a bit better if those positions were APHA and CGC rather than APHA and ACB. I chose ACB because I liked the clarity for the daily higher low to form. Clear pivot point, and CGC just didn't have that clear enough pivot point to make me comfortable entering on a daily higher low that quickly. APHA, so standing out strong close up at the high of the day, we held our daily higher low is now 452 and we're looking up at 554, keeping in mind that that resistance level is still about 9% away and we've already seen a solid move off of this low. So at this point, we are going to be anticipating a daily lower high may form here unless the bulls kind of really pick up momentum. Again, we've been watching this inverse head and shoulders setup where we have to break 553 and 554, that double top. If we don't, we will have the equilibrium setup where we have the low, high of the move, higher low. We'll look for a lower high compared to 554 and then we'll look for a higher low after that. So I may be looking to exit my position before 554 resistance and just lock in that profit also, the fact that the hourly time frame is overextended with no consolidation today. And even if I do exit, let's say we start green tomorrow and I exit at 512 and then we pull back to 495 to find an hourly higher low, even that 
could then lower my break-even point on the trade to put my stop at break-even under a key support level. We'll see. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but it is nice to be more comfortable after yesterday was a not a very convincing day, but today making it a bit more comfortable for short-term bulls. So Cron daily higher low is established as well. 806 is that higher low. We will certainly be looking for a lower high compared to 1056. Similar to APHA in the setup, the difference is the resistance is way further away because of that anomaly action we saw last week, which may just fall by the wayside and we may never talk about that again as meaningful or what was it, what was going on, who knows, but looking for a daily lower high compared to that level. TLRY, still not really getting any follow through here, but the bulls are still holding on. Again, the bears are not smacking the price down. Daily higher low is 2103. Resistance is 2286, 23 psychological, and 2390. Bulls still battling the daily exponential resistance. That needs to become support. BFF has been a leader the last three days. So again, that four hour falling wedge, in hindsight, big time bull move off of that level. I should say off of that pattern. And nice to see. So from now, it's time to start looking the other direction, in my opinion. Reason being, we've already bounced 20% off of the low. We're certainly looking for a weekly lower high to be set. And as far as the daily time frame goes, we have $8. A little bit of a double top today, right under $8, $797, $796. And if we can't break $8 tomorrow morning, it's a potential bearish entry top fishing that resistance level. At first, we'll just be looking for an hourly pullback for a higher low compared to 731. But if we were to lose the hourly uptrend, then we would have to form a daily higher low compared to 650. Keeping in mind, we have not changed this daily trend. It's just a move coming right off the low. So at this point, if I were in a bullish position, I would probably be looking to lock in some profit tomorrow morning, especially if we can't break $8 resistance. But let's see if the bears start to show themselves again now that we bounced 20% in three and a half trading days. VGW still pulling back. Bulls aren't doing anything there. Labs is seeing more strength in the extraction sector than VGW is. Daily higher low on labs is now 413 and the top of the move is 462 resistance approaching. Again, we're just looking for a weekly lower high compared to 549, but there's not no indication of that weekly lower high being set just yet. So I'm going to start looking at labs as opposed to VGW for the extraction play because the chart is more bullish. Hexo had a weird short squeeze today where we had a halt and then news come out that the financials are going to come out a little bit later and that there is funding. And I believe the bullish reaction initially was due to the number of insiders that are a part of that funding. So potentially the fact that the market perceives it as, you know, management or insiders putting their money where their mouth is. But you can see that that move was impulse, short squeeze, and then just no follow through. So big bull move, pull back, little lower highs, lower lows. And what that's going to leave us with is a big bull move and an hourly higher low trying to form. 265 is currently support. Bulls want to hold 265 first thing tomorrow morning. We would then be looking up towards resistance of 286 and probably looking for a lower high compared to that level. But what it boils down to is the daily trend change that everybody needs to see. And we have to see a bull break over 301 for the daily higher low. The daily higher low is now 246, clearly established, 245 actually. But we have to break 301 to confirm the daily trend change. OGI, still a daily bull flag possible. Daily higher low is 339. Bulls must break 380 to confirm it and to confirm the daily trend change. So still a handful of names need that daily trend change. IAN bulls close strong. Very low volume. For IAN, it only takes a few hundred thousand dollars to move the price four or 5%. So keep that in mind, but we're not done yet. And bulls right up at resistance, 237. We broke it by a couple pennies. We're now looking up at 257 as the next level. I don't consider this a clear enough pivot point to be a daily higher low personally. We broke the higher low every candle pattern only by four pennies. Again, very low volume on this bull move, but I would need to see a more distinct pivot point for me to call a daily trend change taking place. But again, all the bulls are doing is just creating more and more space for the eventual daily higher low to form once we do top out on this current move. Cure Leaf continues to be weak, but there was a bottom fishing play to have to be had today. Support was 685. We bounced off of 695. Have we changed the hourly trend? The answer is no. 
So we're gonna look for a top of this bounce tomorrow morning. We'll have to hold 695 and change the hourly trend. The hourly trend change, if we get it, would then have us just looking for a daily lower high compared to 853. So we're not looking at any kind of major bull shift. We're just looking to defend support and set a daily lower high. And if we can't, and if we break 685, that's the lowest price of this consolidation and the bears will continue to have complete control. And even if you do not have a cure leaf position, that is the last thing that you want to see as a bull in the USMJ sector, as cure leaf is definitely one of the sector leaders. C-Web trying to turn things around, but again, the daily exponential resistance rejecting the price for almost three weeks at this point. And unless we break 1958, the bulls don't prove anything to us. That's a must break level. TRUL trying to form the daily higher low, daily 12 period exponential support held the last consolidation. It's currently holding this consolidation. We want to see an increase in bull volume and a break of the high of the last couple of days for us to say, yes, our daily higher low is now 1287. And we're looking back up at 1375 resistance, still holding my swing position at this point. I've been holding it for about a week and a half. And when we lose the daily uptrend, I will exit this position. So if we set this higher low, fail to break 1375 and then roll over, I will be out of that trade locking in some small profit. So CL, we had news overnight and the wording of the news release is leading to concerns of the deal going through. We've had management saying that they're still confident that the deal is going to go through, but the wording, it was in the sense that the market was anticipating the press release to say, okay, our time has expired and the deal is now going through. When in, re in reality, what we got was, okay, the timeline has expired for the DOJ to respond. Now we're going to work on a deal. And everybody's saying, wait a second, we already had all the details worked out. We were just waiting on time to expire. So it looks like they're back to the drawing board in a certain degree. And what that opens the door for is, is the, the discount going to change as far as how many shares are going to be exchanged of OH4CL or are, are all the details on the table to be potentially changed. So that led to a bearish reaction. We had been seeing funds leave CL and go to OH as we've been anticipating this time expiration. And we got that discount down to a very small amount because the market said, okay, this deal is very likely to go through now. The press release made everybody change their mind. And with the green day on CL and the red day on OH, just like that, the discount is big again. So I look forward to continue playing this discount setup as I have in the past, because again, the deal is still on the table as far as I'm concerned. If it does fall apart, then definitely that will be bearish for OH, at least in the short term, the price action will respond negatively. But I love when there's some extra discount out there, because as long as the deal's on the table, that could potentially be some nice bonus funds. And again, if we get any kind of word from the company in the short term that the deal is moving forward, and that there aren't any major changes to what we've already been told about the deal, then we will see yet again, that discount shrink very quickly. So it's a different chart, chart setup now with CL's daily higher low being set, just like a lot of other names at 772 to change the daily trend, we must break 889 resistance. And that would give us a daily trend change, which would mean zoom out and look for a weekly lower high. Anything under 1265 is a weekly lower high. And for OH with the pullback today, look at all that bear volume. We've got 492 as a must hold level. So as I said in yesterday's video, I am looking to make an entry on an hourly oversold bounce, playing off of 492 support and being all cash, I welcomed that gap down and made an entry today, made one small entry, currently pretty much break even with where we closed. And I was intending on entering a second position closer to that support level if we got within one or 2% of it. We never did. So I held off and I currently have a small position. And again, position size in USMJ is much smaller than Canadian MJ due to liquidity. We could drop 10% from here and it would be a one day loser for me. So that's just how small that position is. Am I still looking to add a second position? No, because the hourly RSI cooled off. So if we drop back down towards that support of 492, it's a different setup now than it was first thing this morning. So I will look to exit that small position at a small loss if 492 does end up breaking and the bulls have to change the hourly trend if we're gonna have any confidence in holding that. Essentially, we have to break the high of today, 540, if the bulls are going to have any hope in holding this 492 level. If we do, 
And if we do change the hourly trend, we'll just be looking for a daily lower high to form on this bounce, but discount back in play. GTII, daily equilibrium still in play. The ranges are just insignificant on the daily time frame these last two days. 11.34 is a must hold. We have to change the hourly trend. The bulls have been unable to do so. If we do tomorrow, our daily higher low will be set and we'll be look for, looking for a lower high compared to 1280 resistance. So that's where we stand overall. Still a ton of names out there need daily trend changes. CGC getting some really nice bounce relief. Is this just a weekly lower high to drop to a lower low on CGC? I have no idea and we'll take it one day at a time as always. Every little day that we get more follow through increases the odds that the bulls will be able to hold the 1789 low whenever we do top out. So every little green day helps at this point. And from that, from there, we're going to be looking at ACB and APHA and all these other names. Because again, we're not going to have confidence as a sector until all of the sector is seeing bullish moves. So for example, TRUL in a daily uptrend, that's a great looking daily chart. But we can't be as confident in this daily chart because nobody else on the USMJ space is in a daily uptrend. We will be much more confident in the sector as a whole when everybody is changing their daily trends. And we just don't have that right now. At this point, it's probably, you know, one out of every 10 names has changed their daily trend bullish. So still work to do. It's nice to not be so doom and gloomy that we were, what, a week and a half ago? But still need more proving, still staying skeptical of those bulls, still watching the S&P 500. We've got really nice tightening ranges out there in the markets as a whole. We're watching the FOMC at the end of the month. And we'll see you soon. Have a good rest of your day. So over the summer, I had a friend help me weeding and he got to this spot right here and he cleared it out and he left one little dinky tomato plant that was there on its own. We didn't plant it. And I thought, okay, it's too late in the season. Won't get anything out of it, but might as well let it grow. So a lot of people would look at this and say, wow, that's one giant weed coming up in the middle of your bushes. When in reality, we're now getting some really nice cherry tomatoes in mid-October that I'm eating on. So the lesson and takeaway for me is number one, let things do their thing. Speaking of which, this plant is a monster. Forget what that is off the top of my head, but there is some benefit to it. Have to double check that. But also, this next summer, I mean, it's what, mid-October and these are still going. I'm going to plant two waves of tomatoes so I don't just have a ton of tomatoes all at once and I have to store them all. I'll be able to grow half of my tomatoes early and then I'll start half of them a month later and just stagger the harvest of tomatoes that I'll have all summer and fall.